So a few days ago, they posted this interview on their Facebook page, and I wanted to go over it and give my thoughts about it. And you guys can give your thoughts about this interview in the comments down below. But I think they're going to start interviewing big players in the game from now on, and they'll probably post it on their Facebook page every now and then. So the first person to be interviewed was this guy Soko8 from City1512 and his favorite turf is the T-Rex Titanopolis turf and his favorite contest is Governor. So let's begin. How long have you been playing Mafia City and what keeps you engaged boss? I began playing Mafia City in 2021. For the first six months, I only used it as a chat platform because there were too many things in the game, and I had no idea what to do. Things changed when I participated in my first Vegas and Gold Rush events. I continue playing because of the friends I've made in game, and I've even met some of them in person. I really enjoy the teamwork events and being a leader. The competition and battles motivate me to continue growing. So this I never really understood. I never understood how like people could use this game as a chat platform because earlier I used to be a hardcore gamer and I rarely used to chat with anyone in the game. However, recently, since I've gotten bored of the game so much, I actually use the game as a chat platform more and I barely play the game. So now I totally understand how people can use this game as a chat platform. But before that, I had absolutely no idea how people could even do that. Speaking of the competition and battles, which event do you like the best in game? I like many events and they are all interesting. If I really have to have to name one, I think it would be the governor because it has real losses. I want to win Governor, but it doesn't seem like a convenient time for me this round. So this I actually don't understand. I don't really know why uh, like some players like events with real losses more than events that don't have real losses. Because for me, my favorite event is City Royale. And it's my favorite event because it, it doesn't have real losses. And I feel like... Whenever there are events that don't have real losses, you just have more freedom to do whatever you want. And that to me is more fun because I can just send a full march to like a really strong player and lose my entire march and not really care about it because I know I'm going to get back my troops like after the round ends. Uh, and that to me is, is a lot of fun. You know, I, I like trying to attack really strong players and see if I can burn them or not. But whenever I am doing events that have real losses, I'm usually more cautious and I try to avoid attacking players that I think I'm going to lose against. So, yeah, in my opinion, the events that don't have real losses are, may, are way more fun for me. But I would like to hear your thoughts if you think that events that have real losses are fun, why do you think so? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, next question. What features do you like best in the game? I love all the designs in the game. I prefer the adjustments to the vehicles combined with Lan Ching because the Renegades were too strong and I was losing a lot when facing that formation. Additionally, I think your purchase website is excellent because getting packs is much easier and more convenient. So I'm actually surprised that he mentions Lan Ching because Lan Ching could only be used to beat players that were like maybe 1000 to 1500% stats. And I'm assuming he probably had like two to 3000% stats back then. Uh, so he shouldn't have had problems against Lan Ching, but maybe he just started spending late. And so maybe back then he probably did have like 1000 to 1500% stats and was probably losing to uh, vehicle formations with Lan Ching, which is why 
he said this. Otherwise, if he if he had two thousand to three thousand stats, I don't think uh, he would have any problems against Lanching. But yes, eventually they made Renegades weaker in general, and now the only strong Renegades are the golden ones. So you basically have to spend a shit ton of money to be able to get good Renegades, which is why I don't really care that much about Renegades. I, I use Lanching, and my Lanching is shit, to be honest, but that's because I don't use vehicles. I just use bikers, plus my Lanching, and she does a few extra kills, but I usually focus more on stats than trying to upgrade Lanching and optimize Lanching to get the most kills. Next question. Have you had any bad experiences recently? Our city has a rogue clan which doesn't bother me during the off season. Now, players of that clan can build towers and make a mess in the season event. They can share the coordinates of other players who don't have a truce or reveal our plans to other competing cities. Last season, I lacked towers and the rogue clan would place towers in the wrong areas which was frustrating. So you should have a choice as a mayor to ban rogues like them from the season event. Now this, they did have a skill that the mayor could use to kick out one player from the season map for like 24 hours or something. But then they removed it and they changed it to something else. I'm not really sure why. Uh, but I guess they're not really interested in uh, banning rogues from the season event. So I don't think this problem is ever going to be solved. But who knows? Maybe that'll change. Next question. Do you have any suggestions for our development team on the game design? I hope the new features accommodate all kinds of players and that updates can be less frequent. I read the system updates I read the system updates weekly, but I hope you can give players more advanced notice before introducing a new feature so we can learn how the new feature benefits us and determine which is the best for us. It would also be nice to have more in-depth tutorials and in-depth guides for the new features, for example, which medallions or warfare prototypes are better and for whom. So I agree with this part that the new feature should accommodate all kinds of players. I think the gap between non-spenders and spenders has grown pretty wide and they probably need to add ways for non-spenders to somehow catch up to the spenders at least a little bit. They're obviously never going to do it, but I really hope it happens. And the updates being less frequent, I think this is a problem that a lot of big spenders have because whenever they do updates in the game, the big spenders have to spend thousands of dollars on the update just to keep up with the other top players. So I can totally understand why he wants the updates to be less frequent because yes, the more frequently the updates happen, the more uh, the big spenders are forced to spend. And so if they add fewer updates, I think they'll be required to spend less per month. Also, I'm not sure how much this is going to help if they give players an advance notice before introducing a new feature. I don't really think that's going to help because usually whenever they give like a notice about a new feature, they don't really tell you anything about that feature, anything useful. They just kind of vaguely describe what the feature is going to be and what it's going to do. And it's very difficult to understand what actually the feature is until they actually release the feature. And even after they release the feature, they don't really have any in-game tutorials or guides to explain in detail how these features work. You know, they kind of just want players to try and figure out for themselves. And I think the reason why they want players to do that is because it makes them more money. So for example, whenever they add a new renegade, 
they're obviously not going to tell you whether the renegade is good or bad because if they say it's good then everyone's going to buy it if they say it's bad then nobody's going to buy it but if they keep it kind of vague then all the big spenders are going to want to buy the renegade the new renegade and then test it out and see if it's actually good or not and if it's good then they're going to continue using it if it's bad then they won't use it but they spent money and Fantix just got their money and so they're happy so i don't think that they're ever going to have any in-depth game tutorials or in-depth guides to help players figure out which medallions and prototypes to get because it makes them more money when players don't know which medallions and prototypes are the best for them that's my opinion last question is there anything more you want to say before we conclude yes i'm glad i can share my suggestions the game makes me happy whether i win or lose and i'd also like to say something to my friends in game many clans out there want to copy us but we are the only true sexy death squad that is it that's the interview let me know your thoughts about the interview in the comments down below. Before I end this video, I'd like to thank all of my patrons for the support. To support me, you can find my Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching the video guys, and I will see y'all in the next one.